Welcome to today's Seidokan Saturday. So today we're going to look at Seidokan Yakusoku Sanban, number three. You may ask, or you may have asked, why am I just doing one Seidokan Yakusoku per rank? Why don't I just teach all 11 to the white belt or whatever? Part of it is because I'm intermixing my Kempo Yakusoku in there as well, my Kempo techniques. But mostly it's so that each one has time to be associated with the kata that you're learning at that level or this particular kick that you're learning at that level and to build concept on concept, not just a technique and a technique. Also remember that each of the Seidokan Yakusoku is just the irimi or what's known as the entry technique, the first which then would be followed up with other things following. So Seidokan Yakusoku number three begins as the punch comes at us we step, and again, different teachers will have different nuances on where and when to step. Some step slightly backwards at a 45. I go straight to the side, same as we did in number two. Some go slightly forward with this one, what we would call 739 and 10, 1030. But I'm going straight to the side with mine. We're going to basically just do an outward knife hand block, but I double it up with a parry and a block at the same time. As we step, I push the punch away softly, guide it so that I can catch it here as I block and catch. From here, we're going to yank the arm down through a clockwise arc, pulling on the arm. What that will do is disrupt their body balance forward. Once I have them there, then we mawashigeti and step right back down in front of them, which is where our follow-ups will occur. So again, we step side, Parry, knife hand block, grab, circle pull, roundhouse kick. Now, whether you do the roundhouse ball of the foot or roundhouse instep depends on how far you've pulled their body and where you're going to kick. I have actually seen um, this done with a front kick as well, which would be okay, and in concept, it doesn't change a whole lot. But for my dojo, from watching Toma teach it, and when he actually makes the corrections or teaches it, not just what he lets go. Remember, Toma let a lot of stuff go. Even when he was at Awase Park and was teaching, and you had a whole line of instructors there. You can watch down the line, everybody's doing it differently. But if you watch who he corrects and what he corrects it to, then what you watch Toma doing is, is the way we're going to do it, which essentially is this. And step. Holly, do you get Okay, so the punch comes, I parry block, grab pull, notice what it does to her body. Now, ideally, I would be kicking at the same time so that as her body's coming down, I am kicking into her fall. So we're having a meeting of the foot and face, but we're not going to do that. We're going to be nice. The nice way to do it is to do the full pull first. Allow your partner to be safe so you can control where you kick. In real life, I'm not as concerned about safety. I'm just going to grab, pull, kick, right? Hey, hey, block, pull, kick. And notice what would have happened if I had done that and back into place. Hey, there you have those And there you have it, Seiro Kanyak Soku number three, the way I teach it to do in my dojo. If it's different, if you have different opinions on it, feel free to comment. I've probably seen all the variations. And again, do it the way your teacher tells you to, and you'll probably be doing okay. Like, share, subscribe, and until next Saturday, as always, keep practicing.